I imagine a majority of you know who Heather Antos is. She started out at Marvel. She did some milkshake thing, become controversial, got fired, went into gaming, went into Valiant, went over to IDW. Somehow she's now been promoted up to senior editor of Star Trek, whatever. She went out and she was concern trolling somebody. Apparently somebody has been consorting with the enemy, according to Heather Antos, and she was beside herself. And I saw the tweet. It was funny. The responses were funny. The Jimmy Palmiotti response was especially funny. It was almost like, um, I don't know, an uncle trying to talk to his niece. I don't know. The way people were, were talking to Heather Antos, it was like they were talking to a child whose puppy died. It was like... They weren't speaking to an adult. It was it was uh, it was quite funny. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to acknowledge that it happened, and I'm here to speak about who Heather was actually referring to with her concern trolling. In fact, it was an artist named Irene Strachalski. Some of you might be surprised. I don't actually keep up with the with the comic book drama for the most part. I don't mind talking about it as long as it's mostly DC and Marvel related, and maybe some other key players here and there. But me personally, I don't like drama. So I try to live my life on the DFL. I call it the drama-free life. I just kind of stay out of it. Now, apparently, Irene, I'm assuming she went on to Ethan Van Skyver's YouTube channel and was promoting her project Fiendish, which was fully funded and is doing very well on Indiegogo. Congratulations, Irene, on all your success. Apparently, that ruffled some feathers when it came to Heather Ontos. And Irene laid the smacketh down. On Heather's candy ass. She went total rock on this bitch. And she just let her know what was going on. And my goodness. The reply was so good. I had to cover it. I don't like living drama. But I don't mind covering it. Especially when somebody is laying it on. To Heather Antos' candy ass. This was really funny. So this was her rebuttal. Because this is apparently they're friends. Or they were friends. Or Heather would like you to believe they were friends. This is what Irene had to say. And there's five tweets that I'm actually going to quote here. First up. Let's be clear about one thing. If you weren't there to support me while I was in the trenches for years trying to get my dream project off the ground, then you have no right to tell me what to do or who I promote my book with. Damn right, sister. Heather Antos has no business going in there telling people how to do their campaigns. She's never successfully done one of her own. And it sounds like she wasn't exactly being supportive while Irene was trying to get this project off the ground. Heather Antos has a pretty big Twitter following. If she wanted to help out, she probably could have, but she was too busy trolling people on the internet and not editing books over IDW that will come out and not be very good. So I think it was very good to address this thing head on and let her know you weren't there helping me. You don't get to lecture me after the fact on how I choose to promote my book. She successfully promoted her Indiegogo campaign. It's over $50,000. I would say Irene did something that was smart and allowed her to connect with customers who wanted to enthusiastically support the project Fiendish. But she was not done laying the smack down on Heather Antos. Next, she says, if you consider someone a friend, then you wouldn't be silent for years, only to message them with bailed threats just as their dream project is coming true. When you respect someone, you don't try to ruin them over simply speaking to people you don't like. Now, Irene has done work with Marvel in the past. I know she's done some work on Silk and whatnot. She and Heather Antos probably talked in the past. Maybe Heather hired her for a project or two in the past. But it sounds like they hadn't been talking in years, but they're friends, right? Because she's out there talking about her friend, her dear friend that she lost to Comicsgate. These guys stole my friend from me. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You haven't spoken to me in years. You never messaged me until it was time for Irene to promote her project, get her project funded so she could get it out to people. And then apparently she started DMing her and like, you better not be with those CG people. No one will ever hire you again. I'll never hire you. No, I'm an IDW. I know a lot of people at Marvel Comics. I know people at Valiant. I know people everywhere. If you want to work in this business, sister, you don't want to cross me kind of thing. I don't think she probably stated it that way, but obviously that's how it's being taken. And if they were friends, they would have been speaking and she would have been supportive. But no, she was only there to reprimand and let her know that she wasn't doing something that was Heather Antos approved. And I salute Irene for doing the right thing and just going about her project. But she was not done. Heather Antos needed another dose of reality. Supporting minorities, women, and immigrants, my ass. I'm all of those things, but there's only one type of person who's trying to tell me what I can or can't do. 
Let's take a step back and look at who the real closed-minded bullies are, shall we? This is a normal tactic for a lot of the Twitter bullies, the woke people. Hey, the SJWs, if you want to call them that. Minorities, women, and immigrants. You don't get that status unless you agree with them. If you disagree with them, then you're just a straight white man like everybody else, right? It's the weirdest thing. They, they, they claim to champion. I'm here for the minorities, the women, the, the immigrants. You support Ethan Van Skyver. You were on his live stream. To hell with you. You're going to burn at the stake kind of thing. And according to Irene, she's only receiving bullying from one source. Well, at least the one that she's outing right here being Heather Antos. If you were really all in it for women, minorities, and immigrants, you would have been supporting a minority female immigrant in Irene herself. It's absolutely disgusting how they try to unperson people and just try, try to take your traits away from you if you don't go along with the status quo. If you're a minority, you have to think like Heather Antos tells you to think, or you're not a minority. If you're a woman, you have to think like Heather Antos and the rest of the bullies on Twitter tell you to think, or you're not a woman. If you're an immigrant, you have to think like Heather Antos and the other bullies tell you to think, or you shouldn't even be here to begin with. It's absolutely insane. The weird double standards that are out there. Doesn't sound like Irene was getting that from EBS or the Comics Gate crowd. Not really all that surprising, is it? I'm not surprised, but she wasn't done yet. I don't have to agree politically with all my friends. I know progressives, liberals, and conservatives. I have no problem with anybody as long as they are civil. But if someone wants to cut me off just because I'm against a toxic atmosphere of conformity, then good riddance. This toxic atmosphere of conformity, as Irene calls it, which I think is a very apt description and was very well said, is absolutely destroying everything. It's ruining society. No one can have fun anymore. Everybody has to pick a tribe nowadays. Me personally, no thank you. I'm just gonna do my own thing. You know what? You wanna know what team I'm on? I'm on Team West. Team thinking critical and a few friends of mine, obviously, that I could sort with. And we come here on the channel, we talk about things, but I'm no longer a pawn in anybody's game. I signed up for 20 years of my life to go and do somebody else's bidding. And I did it the best that I could. And now I'm a free man. And that's the way it's going to be until the day I die. And I personally prefer it that way. I can tell you right now, just because I have an opinion on this channel doesn't mean anyone else on this channel has that same opinion. And if you hear someone else have an opinion on this channel, it doesn't mean I have that opinion. If you hear it from my mouth, then it's my opinion. And it sounds like Irene is of the same mind and she doesn't have a morality checklist when it comes to her friends and relationships. You can believe whatever you want to be. If we're friends, let's be friends together. If we're not and you don't speak to me for years, don't come over here concern trolling me, trying to call me out for being a bad person. Irene's final tweet was, in conclusion, nobody tells me what to do. Nobody controls me. I'm going to go where I see the positivity and the passion for comics that I never found while in the mainstream and where people don't try to force my obedience and submission. I'm going to go where I am free. You are not the only one that feels this way. I've talked to a lot of uh, comic book pros, comic book hobbyists, and the industry just burns their mouth because it's so tribal. And the power brokers within comic books expect obedience. If you want to be free, if you want to be able to express yourself and find people that love comic books and love you no matter what, you're going to have to go outside the mainstream. You're going to have to go into crowdfunding, maybe one of the small press publishers that isn't insane or whatnot, and really find the passion for comic books because, I don't know, DC and Marvel these days, it's just a lost cause. There's so many Borg there, and everybody is part of that hive mind. It's just really disgusting. It's nice to see somebody stand up for themselves. Heather Antos is an enormous bully on social media. Most of the time, hell, Scott Snyder would not stand up for himself to Heather fucking Antos. So kudos to Irene for doing that because... Scott Snyder is one of the most successful comic book creators in the world. He's probably getting over a million dollars a year just for writing comic books. And he's afraid of fucking Heather Antos and standing up for himself when she calls him out on Twitter. The dude was literally, literally on vacation with his children and he didn't parrot whatever the comic book industry line was. It was some stupid thing. And he actually came back and apologized after Heather Antos called him out. He said, you know what, Heather, I'm sorry. Here, let me go and regurgitate and echo whatever it is that you guys are telling me to say. I think you'd be shocked at the kind of pull Heather Antos actually has behind the scenes. People do not want to criticize this person. I'm willing to do it, but I don't want to be a part of mainstream comic books. I just want to be a you know fabulously successful and entertaining YouTuber. 
And it sounds like Irene is taking another approach. So I hope all of you had the opportunity to support Fiendish and go and support it on Indiegogo. Hopefully it comes back if you didn't get it the first time, because I say Irene deserves our support for standing up to the bullies and putting them in their goddamn places. Heather Antos has been wildly unsuccessful everywhere she's gone. I don't get why she has all this power. I don't know why she has sway over Scott Snyder. I actually broke down all the numbers. How Valiant essentially died after Heather Antos arrived as one of the editors. And what did they do? They promoted her to senior fucking editor. This industry is insane. We need more Irene's and less Heather's.